Welcome big dogs. So this is the second video of this series to determine the stresses on a solid square shaft. This is the coating aspect of it. We're doing this in Python and we've created a object oriented program to determine our worst case stresses on a solid square shaft. So what I've created here is, is several scripts to the left specifically it's got some classes here's our solid square shaft class I also have classes for elements 1 element 2 element 3 all the way up to element 5 and then I have our more circle class that I've shown how to write this in a previous video so the square shaft right here the solid square shaft class has some inputs in here um, that is initialized by our constructor. We have all our translational forces and all our moments and also the side and length of the solid square shaft. In addition we have applied composition to initialize or create element 1 objects, element 2 objects all the way up to element 5. So solid square shaft has a element 1, has a element 2, you know how that goes with composition. So in this class I have defined some methods to determine the area of the square shaft, the area moment of inertia, and also calculate the torsional stress since that's specific to a square shaft. And then the max shear stresses and then also I have some functions that are going to determine the max principal stresses, min principal stresses, max shear stresses from the five elements. So in the element one objects I have had to pass in a bunch of parameters as shown here. It kinda goes off the screen but you know they're pretty much the same. I pass in the torsional stresses, the moments, forces and then the area of the shaft the area moment of inertia the x location the y location and all that and so that's what I've created so for element one for example I've passed in all these parameters and then I initialize them in this constructor and also I Special use composition again I leverage that because element 1 has a more circle and I pass in some stresses that are calculated down here it includes the axial stress the X moment stresses the axial stresses combined from superposition on the element and then the shear total shear stress and I do the same thing for element 3 so it's pretty much rinse and repeat for those so um, element 5 is the only thing that's a little bit different. Um, but it pretty much it calculates the shear resultant because I have multiple shear stresses I'll calculate the shear resultant um, just using Pythagorean theorem so that's just an added feature in element 5 because it's in the center. So we'll go ahead and apply this to our example so I've created just a script here, a, a test script. So what we want to do first is we want to create a solid square shaft object. So we'll just call it x equals solid square shaft. And it'll import it automatically for me here. And I'm going to specify the x forces. So in the previous video we labeled some forces in there. So these are the forces we applied. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in and see if we get the same answer for stress. So for the X force it was one pound force. For the Y force it was negative one pound force. For the Z force it was ten pounds and I'll just go ahead and write those in real quick. And the side length was one. So I've created a solid square shaft object. Now what I want to do is I want to access element four. So I'm just going to do print 
x dot element four, and we'll access sigma y in this case. We'll do the same thing for tau. Four dot tau, and so the values we're expecting are going to be shown on this slide. So let's go ahead and see what we get. So I got four and forty nine point five seven, and then here I got four and forty nine point five. So I did some rounding in here. Yes, so that, that gave me the result I wanted. So now I can go ahead and I can determine the, you know, maybe I want to know, I want to look at more circle for this, so for element four. So we'll access more circle dot, and then we have a more circle plot. And you can see here, um, coding in this way makes it a lot easier. Um, you can see here's more circle for element four. So our max principle looks to be about 51 and a half PSI. Our min is going to be 48. Our max shear is going to be 49, close to 50. So now what I want to do is, okay, so I want to determine where the max principal stress is between those five elements so I can go ahead and access the solid square shaft methods and I want to get max principal stress. It's going to show me, tell me what the max principal stress is you can see it prints in the console, it's 93.26 PSI is the worst case max principal stress for our square shaft. So if you recall what I'm actually doing here is I'm going through each of these elements and I've created a more circle for each of these and then I'm pulling the max principal stress between those five elements turns out to be 93.26 PSI. And you can do the same thing with von Mises stress, but you know, setting it up in this way, object-oriented programming, uh, it's very useful. I can extend this to a circular shaft, to circular tubes, as we'll go in in some future videos to see how we can easily extend this to other applications by using the reusing the code for element one, two, and all these things. We can reuse a lot of this stuff and uh, makes it easy. So um, that's all I got today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Adios.